All right, everyone. Today, <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about section two and section three of chapter four. So in each of these two sections, we're going to be expanding on some applications of using these inverse trig functions. So in section one, we kind of learned how to calculate these inverse trig functions, and now we're going to kind of use them in context. Um, before we get into any actual examples here, I want to define just a little bit of vocab here. So let's say we have a person and got like the sun going on down here and then their buddy down here. Um, so if they're just looking straight ahead, let's say that that's kind of like their line of sight. If they are looking up at, say, the sun, this angle here we'd call an angle of elevation. So that's drawn from our line of sight up. And let's say that maybe they could be looking down here at their BFF. So this angle where we draw from our line of sight down is called an angle of depression. We don't call it depression because their BFF is sad. It's just because we're kind of looking down. Everybody okay with what we mean by angle of elevation, angle of depression? The big thing to remember there is that the line of sight is the one arm of our angle that we're forming. And then you're either rotating clockwise or counterclockwise from that line of sight, whether you're talking about an angle of elevation or an angle of depression, right? Uh, so, little example here. Let's say Christy is looking up at the Fisher Building in downtown Detroit. She is standing 200 feet from the base of the building and finds the angle of elevation to the top of the spire to measure 66 degrees. How tall is the Fisher Building? What would we want to start by doing here? Yeah, let's draw a picture, bro. All right. So, do, 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 do. So there's my building. And then we have Christy here. I'll put some hair on her. There we go. There's some hair. Okay. So if she's looking straight ahead, here's her line of sight. And then we're looking up to the very top of that building. Um, what's wrong with the picture that I've drawn here, though? We don't know how tall she is. So in a situation like this, what am I? Where am I assuming that Christy is at? She's lying down like flat on the ground, which is weird, but since we don't know how tall Christy is, we're just going to assume like her head is at, her 
I line is the same as the ground, which is kind of dumb way of like I'm not sure I'd want to lay down on the ground downtown Detroit, but or really downtown Pontiac or really probably any downtown. I'm not sure I'm really willing to lay down on the ground, but you know this is Christy and she's gonna do what Christy wants to do. So we know that this is 66 degrees and she's 200 feet from the base. So really, this is just going to resolve into a triangle problem, right? Yeah, what is the question asking us to find? The height of the building, which would be which side of our triangle? Yeah, the opposite side or the other leg. So to solve for that, which trig function do I want to use? Nope. Yeep, you guys guessed a lot of wrong things before coming up with tangent. So opposite over adjacent, right? So to solve for h, we can just multiply both sides by 200. And when I type that into my calculator, I get... Salt my notes, 449.21 feet. If you get a nonsense answer to this, what do you suspect you've done wrong? Radian. Yeah, you're probably in the radian mode as opposed to degree mode, right? So definitely got to keep an eye on that. Everybody okay with that? Let's, let's do another example. Okay, so it says here Jane has climbed a tree and is looking down at her friend Mary. Mary or Jane has climbed 17 feet into the air and the angle of depression to Mary is 49 degrees. How far is Mary standing from the base of the tree? First thing we want to do is to yeah, let's draw ourselves a picture. <clears throat> Here's my tree. That sounds like it probably hurt. Well, she's hanging out in a tree. Maybe she's part bird, you know? Yeah, I know, right? And then her buddy down here. Uh, well, does she need to be laying down? Nope. Because whose line of sight are we worried about? The tree girl. Jane of the trees. God bless you. And we know that this is, God bless you, 17 feet there. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, 17 feet up. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We're looking for this distance. How far are we from the base? Thank you. Everybody's okay with this? Okay. So if I translate this into just a right triangle, what should I, where are my angles here? Actually, maybe let's draw it this way. This is probably the more natural way to have drawn it. Is that way, right? That's basically the same shape as what we had before. So the angle measure over in this corner is 49. This length is 17. And that side is what we're looking for. Everybody agree with that? Okay. 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 Uh, so again, we'll use tangent. Good. Equals opposite over adjacent. So I multiply both sides by L. And then I divide both sides by tan 49. And this comes out to be about... 14.78 feet. Sure. Amazing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Next example. Claude and Simone are riding bicycles in Paris. At one point, they look up and measure the angle of elevation to the top of the Eiffel Tower to be 32 degrees. When they pedal 100 meters closer to the tower, the angle of elevation changes to 37.5 degrees. How tall do they estimate the Eiffel Tower to be? We should start by... Uh, or drawing a picture. Right? That's a pretty good Eiffel Tower, right? Wow. Um, you know, like, maybe, but I'm not worried about it. This person's just riding in a bucket in the back. Yeah, that happens. I mean, it's a pretty good one. English, but barely. And notice here that I just made the assumption that their bicycles were riding like basically on the ground.
Everybody's okay with our little pick tour here? Probably should resolve this now into a triangle situation. Everybody okay here with the triangle that we've drawn? Don't get too carried away with your art skills. 32? 37 and a half? So, uh, we were looking for the height of the Eiffel Tower, so I can just do like tan of 32 equals h over 100, right? Wrong. 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 Why is that wrong? Because yeah, the adjacent side isn't just 100. It's going to be 100 plus whatever that piece is. Let's call that piece x. So what I can write is that tan 32 is going to equal opposite over adjacent. But that gives me two variables in the same equation. No, sure, it's fine. Because I have enough information to write a second equation with two variables in it. So we looked at this triangle, right triangle. What other right triangle can I look at? That, one. that right triangle. That one. So if I set that, e or that I know is also equal to opposite over adjacent. Everybody's okay there? This is now going to form a system of two equations, and I can solve that system. So I'm going to choose to solve this system by substitution. Since I have multiplication and division going on, it's usually going to be easier to use substitution there than elimination. I'm going to start by rewriting these equations so that I have no fraction. So the first equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 100. And I'll multiply the second equation by x. And since these are both equal to h, I can use substitution to just set them equal to each other. At the same step, I'm also going to distribute the first equation. Everybody so far so good? So notice I distributed out that first equation, right? Went whoop, whoop. Yeah, some kind of noises. Uh, so to solve this for x, I'm going to get the x's on one side and the non-x's on the other. So I'm going to subtract x times tan 37 to both sides. and then subtract 100 tan 32 from both sides. On the left-hand side, I have an x in both terms, so I'm going to factor out that x.
and then divide both sides by the quantity tan 32 minus tan 37. And then it's calculator time. So that gives me 438.64 meters. Is that my final answer? No, what were we really looking for in this problem? H. What did we solve for? X. How am I going to get H now? Plug it into one of the two equations. Which one will I plug into? I'm going to plug into that one. They would estimate the Eiffel Tower to be 336.6 meters high. It's a tall tower, dude. Questions about this one? This is the most complicated of these three examples that we did. But it's not so bad, right? It just turns into solving a system problem. The hardest part, in my experience, is that students get their picture correct and they're using only the right triangles to write their equations. I'll occasionally catch students that try to use a non-right triangle to set up their ratio. Don't do that. You gotta be using right triangles. So, section three is about applications. Yeah, we did all of section two right there. Um, the major application that we're going to talk about is going to be about bearing. which is a way to describe uh, like what direction you're headed. Now if you're driving in a car, bearing is probably not that important because you're going to only be driving out where there's a road, probably, um, unless you're some weird kind of off-roading situation. Uh, but if you're flying a plane or driving a boat, I don't know if it's called driving, but steering, sure, we can. Yeah, any of those verbs would do. Um, oftentimes, stop talking, please. The navigation that you're describing is going to be using these bearings. Um, additionally, like if you're a doing any kind of orienteering, like if you are like a special forces unit that's like, going through the backwoods to get someplace, not using a vehicle, you're probably communicating using this kind of direction system as well. So things to keep in mind when talking about bearing. We start our bearing measurement at due north. We rotate measure clockwise. And all bearings are from 0 to 360. So there's no like coterminal stuff going on when describing a bearing.
Now, is this the same way that we use to describe our angles in trigonometry? Definitely not, right? Let's look at some examples. So let's say that we have the following bearings. That's the Greek symbol for the letter alpha. So that's alpha, beta, gamma, delta, which are the first four letters of the Greek alphabet. So these guys are bearings. And what we want to do is convert these into um, like standard position angles is what we want to give. Because if we're going to attempt to use sine, cosine, or tangent, we can't use the bearing for our angle measure. We have to use our standard for our standard um, position angle measures. So I'm going to start by drawing a compass rose, which is remarkably similar to your xy axis. So if we're asked to draw a bearing of 58 degrees, we're going to start on the north line and we're going to go 58 degrees. So our angle would be here. Everybody agree with that? So I know if alpha is 58, what is this angle down here going to be? 32 is correct. How did you get 32? 90 minus 58, right? So if I want my standard position angle, we start at the positive x-axis and we rotate counterclockwise. So this is just 32 degrees. Everybody okay with that? All right. Next one we're going to do is the 164. That's our beta. So we're going to go 90 and then 74 more. So beta is down here somewhere. Everybody agree with that? So we said that this section here is 74 degrees. So what is this section over here got to be? 16 degrees, right? So if I want my standard position angle, I've gone 90, 180, 270, and then 16 more. How much is that? 286. Everybody okay there? Okay, let's do the 221 next. So let's see, we're going 90, 180, and then how much more? 41 more. Which means, what is that part over here? 49. So 90, 180, and then 49 more is? Twenty-nine. Are we okay with how I'm computing these? You gotta be able to get these 
into the standard position angle measure because if you can't do that, none of your answers afterwards are going to be correct because you're going to be putting the wrong angles in for sine or cosine or tangent or whatever we're trying to use. All right, the last one here is 229, or 299, excuse me. So 90, 180, 270, and then 29 more. So what is this part over here got to be? 61, good. So I'm going to go 90 and then 61 more, giving me 151. Everybody okay with that idea? So got to be able to do those translations between a bearing and then an angle in standard position. I know that thing looks like a mess, but it's because we did four examples on the same axis. But if you were paying attention and watching, it should have been not as confusing as it looks like after the fact. Because after the fact, I agree, that's how it looks like a mess. That's a messy meatball. Let's look at an example now of actually doing a bearing calculation. And this will probably be the last thing that we work on today. But this is not a trivial question, so this is going to take a minute. A boat leaves a port and averages 40 knots, which is a nautical mile per hour, traveling for two hours on a course of 215 degrees. Then the boat turns to a bearing of 162 degrees and travels at 55 knots for three hours. What is the distance and bearing of the boat relative to its starting position at the port? Wow. How many of us in this room are in a physics course or currently or have taken a physics course? Oh, good. What we're about to do right now should look somewhat familiar to you then. So what we're planning on doing is we're going to resolve our trip into two parts. So we're going to have our first part. And then we're going to have our second part. We're going to take the first part and convert that into a horizontal and vertical component. And then take the second part and translate that into a horizontal and vertical component. And then we can find our ending position on our trip by just adding component-wise. We can add the x's and add the y components. And then we can take that ending position and retranslate that then into a distance, a displacement, and a bearing or direction. Those of you that are in physics have probably done some vector addition in similar fashion. That's what we're doing right here. All right, so we're going to start with the yellow part of our trip. I'm going to start by just drawing a little bit of a picture for us. So it says we're course of 215 degrees, so starting at the north line, 90 180, and then 
35 more puts us over here. Everybody okay with that? Okay. How long is this arrow that we've drawn here? 40 knots at for two hours is going to be 80 nautical miles, right? If I multiply nautical miles per hour by hours, I should just get nautical miles out of this. I'm just going to abbreviate that as NMI for nautical miles. So if I want this point here, which is what I'm looking for, how can I calculate that? Well, it's the length of our arrow times the cosine of, oops, this angle, right? What will that, what will that angle be? Two thirty-five. Similarly, then, the y is going to be eighty times sine two thirty-five. Remember that our points on our unit circle are sine, comma, cosine, right? Or cosine, comma, sine, thank you. So the x's come from the cosines and the y's come from the sine. We'll do a similar thing now for the green leg of our trip. 3 times 55 is 165. And I'll draw a similar. So here we have 162. So 90. And then 72 more. So this angle must be 18. So the angle that we're interested in is that standard position angle, which would be how far? Uh, 288, right? So our final position, when I do x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2, is going to give us 5.10 comma negative 222.46. Uh, well, it just helps reason out where I get the 18 from. You don't really need to write it. You don't really need to write any of it if you can get the angle in standard position, but usually drawing the picture makes it a little bit more obvious like where I get the numbers from, which is why I when I show you guys how to do things, I try to draw the picture so it's easier to see where the numbers are coming from. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like if you can do it, you can do it. Like you don't need to show anything. It's not like a show your work kind of step there. So what we're saying then we have our
compass rows here. And we have our final position for our boat. Is something like that. So I want to answer two questions. The first one is how long is the arrow? That's going to tell us the distance we are from the port. And then two what is the bearing, i.e., what is this? Everybody okay so far? So let's start with the how long is that arrow? How am I going to calculate that? I just use the distance formula. And since one of the points in my distance formula is the origin, what does the distance formula just turn into? The Pythagorean theorem? So that's about 222.51 nautical miles. Everybody okay there? Now to answer the second question of what the bearing is, I'm going to ask a different question. What's the standard position angle? I'm going to just refer to that as theta. Well, guess what two pieces of information I have? I have an x and a y, right? I remember that our unit circle definition for tangent was y over x. So I can calculate that angle theta using tan inverse. When I type this into my calculator, I get, unfortunately, negative 88.69 degrees. Was that the angle I was actually drew on there? No. What angle did it give me? It gave me that. But that's okay, because it tells me that that angle is 88.69, right? So our bearing then is just going to be 90 plus 88.69. Yes, sir. Of course. Does that feel okay? I tried to go through that rather slowly and wrote a lot of things out for us. Um, let's try to just kind of, let's try to draw this out neatly, what's actually happening, and see if this method kind of gives us the same thing that we would expect 
just from thinking about this from the information that's given to us in the beginning. Yes. I think the normal time. 25. So the first leg of our trip says that we are going to go 40 knots for two hours on a course of 215 degrees. So 90, 180, and then 35 more. And maybe I'll say that that's 80 long. I'm going to take the end of that arrow and I'm going to make a new compass rose here. And now I'm going to draw a 162 degree angle. So 90 and then 72 more is maybe here. And this one is supposed to be 165 long. So basically twice as long, maybe to there. Everybody okay with that idea? And so my total trip then is this, which looks like about the same arrow that we drew at the end of the last process, right? That gives me good hope that what we've done there is correct. So, for tomorrow, what I'd like you to work on is 19 to 25. And we're done with this today.